The, the process is uh, insulated concrete forms, uh, concrete walls with thick insulation, both interior and exterior. Uh, it's, it's high strength concrete along with steel uh, rebar that's embedded in it. Uh, it. It will easily hold up to an EF5 tornado. Why is it important to you? As a builder, if we can't improve people's lives, if we can't save them in times of traumatic events, then what's the purpose? I mean, people can live in a pup tent, they can live in a, a painted cardboard box. If they're after cheap and inexpensive, then let them go that way. But if you want to save lives and have quality of life, then this is by far the best way to go. Far better than, than mere sticks. Now what steps have you taken to get people's attention, the industry's attention, code people, municipalities' attention? What have you done? I'm constantly communicating with various people in and around the community, people that have the ability to make a difference, builders, developers, uh, city uh, uh, code officials, constant uh, uh, talking with them, architects, engineers, passing on information that show them, prove to them that the uh, technology for constructing has improved dramatically and that we need to be offering this. It's actually less expensive. You talked, uh, rather you organized a conference not long ago. Tell me about it. I organized a conference uh, titled The Need for Stronger, Safer Buildings in the Heartland. And we organized that and brought in five speakers, um, PEs, uh, professional engineers, um, people that have done the research and can show that, that uh, a fortified home, not necessarily an insulated concrete home, this is just one of the methods uh, available to the public today, but it happens to be the very best, and it's the one that I believe in. But uh, people need to look at fortified homes. The city of Moore has adopted a fortified home standard as the basis, and I want to see Oklahoma as a state do that uh, statewide. What are the obstacles to getting this more integrated into the marketplace, and how do you overcome those? The biggest obstacle right now is the builders, uh, the building community will only supply to the customer what the customer demands. The customer needs to be educated to know that this technology is readily available and actually cost them less money. Right now, the biggest factor is the builders won't educate themselves so that they can communicate that back to the public. It's, they're happy to give the public exactly what the public's expecting, which is the cheapest thing that money can, can build. Do you think that energy efficiency and energy cost savings might be more of a carrot than, frankly, safety? Or is it a combination of the two? And here I'm thinking about um, not custom builds. We're at a custom home here. Mm -hmm. And a custom contract between an individual and a builder is one thing. But if you're building streets of homes, what will it take to get builders to build streets of homes like this on a spec basis? The biggest, uh, the biggest thing that is, is holding everything back is the appraisal process right now. The appraisers are simply not giving any kind of credit at all for either energy efficiency or for strength and safety. It's just not happening. They're not doing it. Can they? Absolutely they can. Will they? They won't. They say that it's just not important to them at this point. And that's a conversation that needs to involve lenders as well. It is, and it needs to even go past that to lawmakers. Uh, the lawmakers need to get involved and force that issue. Uh, we, none of us want more government involvement, but unfortunately, sometimes the government has to get involved. It's just like cars. You know, we, we have seatbelts today, government mandated. Uh, we have things that are government mandated for our own good and our own protection. And, and as a builder, if I can't keep you and your family safe, then what's the point? Why am I building? Am, am I doing it just for mere profits?